So, uh, um, okay. Full blessing and success. Chodesh Tov to all of Am Yisrael. Today's learning is for the success and blessings from Moshe Hirsch ben Mendel. Hmm. Does, 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 does Moshe Hirsch have a Hebrew name? I'm sorry, um, his mother's name. Usually we don't say father's ah. name, but I, um, is it Chattel? I don't know. Okay, Moshe Hirsch, um, the son of Mendel and Leah. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Moshe Hirsch ben Mendel and, Le- and Leah Blima Bas Laser, together with all our soldiers. They should also have Hatzlacha and, and Bracha. Shmuel Aram ben Rochel. And Shmuel Aaron Ben Rachel for okay for for Hatzlacha. Uh, we're wishing all of Am Yisrael safety and our soldiers Bracha and Hatzlacha and success and uh, their mission and returning home safely and for all the hostages to come home safely Amen. and that we should see Geulos and Yeshuas, Refuos, Nechamos, all the good stuff. Chodesh Tov Umevorach. Okay, so we wanted to. Um, uh, this hopefully will be our last installment in the piece we're in the middle of which is talking about naming the animals. Okay, we are on, we are, the last point we were talking about was the name Havaya, and expressed as the name uh, Adnut, right, the name for Adnut, that, uh, that uh, in the Midrash, other Mauritian says, you who are Havaya, for you it is pleasant and fitting to be called Adonai, because you are the master of everything down here on earth. You're not just the point of all creation, the source of all creation, but your presence is, uh, shows mastery over all the creatures, um, meaning your dominion is on the lowly creatures too. Uh, and we talked about the verse in Yeshayo that says, Ani Hashem, I am Havaya, right? Hu um, Shemi, it is my name. What is that mysterious pasuk? So that's what we're in the middle of talking about. Now, I believe we are on the second to last paragraph on page 38, Lamed Chet. Yes. Okay. Amnam. Ratza hu yitbarach lehorot chibato im Yisrael amo. God, blessed be he, wanted to show his love, his affection for his nation, Israel. Ki lo yichane kvod shemo al kol hu umot asher bara ki im al Yisrael. Okay. So God has a name which is his essence and then he has a name which speaks of his kavod, his glory. And his kavod precedes him, right? So the name that we ascribe to him from the kavod perspective is not the same as Havaya, right? And here, the Ashach HaKadosh says that God did not want to, to put the, the name of his honor, right, on the nations of the world, except for Yisrael. Meaning since Yisrael represents him personally, and they represent his honor, they're the aspect of him that precedes him, he wanted that they should have a unique uh, it should be clear that he, his unique name is, only goes on their presence, and it is not the relationship of all the umot ha'olah. So one more time, I'm going to read that. Ki lo kavod shemo, the, his name of honor should not be called al kol umot on all the nations, asher bara, that he created, ki im al Yisrael, only on Israel. Vihine, and behold, haya makom lomar, there would be room to say, ki im shem havaya lo yitiaches rak al Yisrael, if the name havaya is something that can only be um, uh, related to by Yisrael, meaning as their personal connection. Lefachot, certainly at least, Shem Adnut Yitzhak Alako, everybody should be able to refer to God through Adnut, right? If you would say, let's say, the supreme name of Hashem, as his, uh, right, as his um, being Havaya, is something that is referred to, that is a relationship that is personal to Am Yisrael, at least, Adnut, which is, refers to God's mastery over all of the lowly creatures, that's something that even the Omot Alam can relate to, let them call Hashem Adonai, right? So, Ki Adon Hu Briotav, because he is the master of all his creatures. al Cain, therefore, the verse in Isaiah says, Amar Ani Hashem, Kilomar Ani Shehu Adnut Ani Hashem, meaning Hashem here is Havaya, right? So, um, the Pasuk is saying, I, Ani, which is Havaya, that's who's Adnut. Okay, Ani Hashem, Achtut Echad, Havaya is one unity, Ki Hashem Hu Elohim, but that, meaning Havaya, that's the Elohim, meaning we're bridging in the Pasuk together, we're saying Ani, which is, we said before, is uh, a lesser name, right? It's referring to God and his Beit Din, so it, which is Elohim or Adnut, right? Ani, that's Hashem, that's Havaya, right? Meaning there's a total Achtut, of God's 
um, uh, um, um, presence from Havaya as the source of existence all the way down to the lowly um, realm as an Adon or Elohim on all the creatures. Elohim refers to specifically the Marechet of Teva and Adnut would be the his Hashkacha with all of the creatures, right? Teidu, you should know. Ki chen hu, ki halo, hu shemi. The Pasuk says, Ani Hashem, right? Meaning Adnut or Elohim is indeed Havaya. Right? Hushimi Shikran Ya Adam Rishon. That is my name that Adam Rishon called me. Ki et Shem Havaya, the name Havaya, Amar, he said, Shelo Na'el Likare Adonai Lioto Adon Hako. So he's explaining the words of the Midrash like this that when Adam said, You are Havaya, meaning the name that we noted that, Hash, that Hashem had before Adam came on the scene, the Pasuk mentioned that he was already Havaya. So the Adam's contribution is he's saying, That Havaya, that's Havaya that's all the way to Adnut. Okay, so now Adnut is recognized by Adam as an extension of Havaya. Havaya is not the name he gave him, but he extended that name Havaya with the recognition oh, that it becomes Adnut all the way down here. But that's something then that, that right now we said by, you know, that should be um, available to all the creatures, including all the nations of the world. And yet we say by us, Zeshmi Bezezachri. What's unique to us to show that, look, that Havaya is connected to us is because we call him Adnut. Okay, so I know well, this is getting complicated. When is the first time that yeah. Adonai is actually mentioned in the Torah? Uh, the Pasuk says that before Avram Avinu came, there's actually a big question on this, there's Gemara and Brachot that says that nobody called Hashem Adonai until Avram came. Because he's so the Avram one that says the first one. It. Yeah, but I think what that means is that in the story of history, not including Adam, meaning anything that was going to come in history that has an apprehension of God, Adam already had. But after that was all lost and everything, Avram's known as restoring the presence right. of God back in the world. He right. said he's not just, right, last week's parasha, we said he's not just, uh, he told mm -hmm. Eliezer, he's not just Elokei HaShemayim, but also Elokei HaAretz. He was Makna HaShemayim Varetz back to God. So he's the one who's seen as introducing Adnut according to that Gemara. So basically we're saying what, what uh, Adam called Hashem was the Adnut part, the, Ad the Adonai part. Uh, his youth of He was a name already given to him in the Torah and by Hashem, that was his name? Oh, yeah, I would say it like this. The, the, the being, Havaya, was recognized by Adam, meaning it's the human perspective, and he, it's Adam's mind that extended that and demanded that that has to come down to an awareness and a relationship of Adam down here. I see. And he, he made that, the he introduced, right, and he, he, he made that real and, and formatted the human mind to be able to do that, and then it's Avram Avinu who staked the territory, claim the territory for God down here. And then this is a, a, a question against those that say, well, the most um, uh, relatable name of God for the non-Jewish should be Adnut. Should Adnut. Right, and yet, uh, we have to address that because Adnut seems unique to us. Meaning right. we're saying he's our, Havaya is our Adon. Everybody else, you know, they, whatever their Adon is, is not, doesn't reach all the way up to Havaya. It's funny because uh, intuitively... So it's not fair to say, call them, uh, they don't have the name yeah, Adon. Yeah, intuitively I would have thought the reverse because most people in the world believe that God created the world. Right. Which is... It's like we say Havaya. everybody, Havaya is to everybody. Havaya should right. be everywhere. So, 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 why? so it turns out that when we say Adnut, what we're saying is Havaya is personal. Yeah. For everybody, Havaya is Havaya for everybody. But, then, but, but, but it that, doesn't matter because Havaya is our Adon. That's right. But then why is he saying that you would have thought that? Ad, ad, exactly ad like what you just said. He, he's positing it, but he's going to, meaning that was all that was all a ruse. Meaning he said you could say, like exactly like uh, you're saying, but he's b meaning that it's not like that. Uh -huh. Meaning you would say, hey, let them have a right. chiza with Adnut. But right. we're going to turn out and say that uh -huh. it's personal. Okay? okay? Yeah. All right. So, Vehu. Kilo no da ilav. You following? Because it's a little complicated, and we, we started it yesterday, but yes. okay. Kilo no da'i love rak shem havaya baruchu. The only what what ap appeared, what um, what he picked up on was shem havaya. Al zeh sha'al lo hu yit baruch lamar, and that's why God said, asked him. He said, v'ani mashmi lizacher bo. Okay, my essence is havaya, but what are you going to call me in terms of a zecher as kavod? V'amar Adonai al hayoto adon lechabriot hine ki et shem havaya asher lo yada zulato. Nobody but God knew the Havaya, right? Kara Ad, or Adam, Kara Adonai, he's calling that Adnut. He's making a kli to connect to that of Adnut. Hine hoda'a ki gadol kvodo, right? 
it is a recognition, a proclamation of an extension, a, a, a greatness of his honor. And therefore, only Israel, because it's a God's full, complete honor, that meaning like we said yesterday, it's, I'm sorry, uh, last time, that have, it starts at Havai and extends all the way down to Adnud, that in itself is something that's unique to Israel, because only Israel can make that Yichud. Okay? Why? 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 Well, I, I can tell you many reasons why, but over here, just uh, he's saying because it's his special kavod, it's personal, so only things that are that uh, the, the only the uh, only things that are personal to God, His personal names, are subject to Yisrael because they have a personal relationship. Vizel uchvodi, my honor. Shehu shem Adonai hanikra chvodi laacher lo yiten. I won't give it to another. Um, uh, it, you could understand it to mean that nobody else can have God's name, or it means that that which Am Yisrael has, nobody else has. Okay. Vihine be pasuk she achayze. And now the verse that follows, Hamisayim Velmer, right? We have one outstanding issue. Um, and to me, okay, okay, one second. So the, the, what's, anybody remember what the last issue would be? This whole story is in the context of looking for a wife. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right, the end the, of this story is, um, is the word, um, uh, is the word, um, is is the word, and Adam did not find for himself a helpmate against him or across from him. Halo yit chametz kol lev be'emet. Behold, would not the heart of all uh, spoil in truth. Be'emor, she yitachen she be'ba lechayim yimatzei ezer la'adam. What did you actually think? Right? Is it really proposing the verse that, uh, that man should find his helpmate with the uh, creatures, meaning with the animals? Ve'ech ya'ale alev. How can a heart um, uh, contemplate Yizav go the behemoth ta'aretz that he should seek union with the animals of the earth. Vihine Amar Rabbeinu Zal, our rabbi said in the Gemara Nivamot, Milame. This teaches us sheba adam akol behema v'chaya that he um, was physically intimate with all the domesticated animals and the wild animals. Vilo nitkara daito, and his mind did not cool down. Meaning. Well, we're going to say here that that has to do with uh, lust and desire. Mm-hmm. But nitkara means to become cool, meaning he was, he was, uh, he was hot. He was, uh, he was, he was burning with, uh, with, uh, with a need for, right, uh, for a sexual need. Mm-hmm. He was being drawn sexually. So, meaning he's seeking to connect, and, he, and he's not fulfilled. Lo nitkara daito means it didn't cool off. He's still being driven to seek something out. He hasn't. He hasn't cooled. He hasn't cooled off. Okay. So those are the words of the of the Chachamim in the Medrash. We're gonna we're gonna explain specifically what this means. Kihine gam she'en hadava kipshuto. First of all, you have to understand that this is not literal. Like, don't think that really happened. <laughs> That's what Alshach says. Ki im sheba bishpitat sichlo. He came with shpitat sichlo. Now shpita is a very interesting word. It can mean two things that are kind of like the opposite here, but they both capture something interesting. Shpita can either mean like a clear decision, like a decisive choice, or it can mean poetic musings. Poetic what? Poetic musings. Meaning what? Like to think poetically. Uh-huh. Like to think in a, in a specifically in a not linear way, but in, our, in a creative way. Meaning to let your mind wander. Okay, so basically Adam came bishpitat sikhlo, that basically he considered in his mind each yeah. and every one. He's like, hmm, is this one going to do it? And he gave the consideration and no. How about this one? No. How about this one? No. Meaning it was, it was mental. But the okay? problem is that you, you're using the word that. That's the real problem. Where, who's using the word that? Not you. Where? We said, Bishpitut Sikhlo. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly. With that is your facility to connect, and he's seeking connection. The lo it didn't cool down. Meaning, he contemplated, he said, Jay, that's a gorilla. Hmm, do you think we could ever go out on a date? That's a bad idea. You know, hmm, you know. So, like, he, he considered it, and still, it, he never found something that settled his mind. And we're going to say that, really, there's an importance here, what goes on in the mind. We're going to bring a klal that has to do with halacha, um, of pat besalo, bread in the basket. 
Okay, we're going to talk about this. Okay, the Heinemet. It is true. Ki hekelu meakushia. The you know the uh, the rabbis sort of in their wording they kind of avoided that you should ask like what's he doing sleeping with the animals. You'll see. Okay, but Amram when in the when they said in the medrash ki lo Hashem. It's not that God said hey, you should do this. He brought them. He presented them to be given names. And the medrash says that Adam himself right. It says milamet sheba Adam meaning he did it himself. It was his, uh, his initiative. Kilotiva lo Hashem, God didn't command it, yashkif v'yera im yimatzebam batzuk, that he should clarify and see if he can find in any of these candidates a fitting, uh, God wasn't like presenting him, hey, like, you know, you need to find, it's time that you got married. This is what I found for you. God yeah, was not but, saying but try this out. The problem is we, we've, we've, we have the implication of that in the order of the things. He's coming to address all this, no. indeed. Okay, let's see what he says, okay? Okay, it's not that God actually expected him, that he commanded him, he said, come find a mate among the animals. So he did it by himself. Nevertheless, you could still ask. ask. Even from man's perspective, what would he be thinking? Did he think in those moments, to think a thought like this, that he's going to find Mrs. Adam among this, you know, the, the, the earthly creatures. Mm-hmm. Did, it, did it not, did his heart not uh, 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 reach the conclusion that there is a great, did not settle, that there is a great gap, a great distinction between him and all these other denizens of the heavens and earth? He didn't recognize that, that, he's, that he's in a different class? Yeah. bisum lev el amram. Ba Adam Alko. Okay, Velo Nitkaradaito. So the words, he wants to be precise with the words. It says that man came onto all of them. Velo Nitkaradato and his dat did not cool off. Velo Amar, it didn't say Velo Matza Shavelo, he didn't find an equal or a partner. It says that he didn't cool off. Uma Inya Kiriru Dat Halas. What is the issue, right, of this cooling off of his mind? Amnam, however, yitachem, it would make sense. Ki hine haya adam levado sharui b'lo yisha. Only man was left, right, without a woman. V'lo yibetzer here, meaning if man was without left a without mate. a woman, sorry? Without a mate, you mean. You said below isha, without a woman. Yeah. Ki hine haya adam levado sharui b'lo yisha. Man was left without a woman. V'lo yibetzer here, her. It does not, the fact that he doesn't have a woman, it doesn't mean that he does not fantasize and have a need for sexual union. Mm-hmm. Therefore, that, that's why the verse said, even in his current state, Lotov, he's in a state of not good. Adam levado. When man is by himself, it is not good. Vihine, and therefore, bivo adam leharher, ki achem levado. What happens when a man starts to contemplate and fantasize because his, his heart has been warmed, meaning he's, uh, he's, he's been uh, heated up. Halotit karer daito, his mind will actually cool off when he has bread in the basket. Okay, so I just want to tell you this halacha, this is a concept in halacha that a person, even his wife, right, she is an erva to him, she is a forbidden sexual relation to him when she's in a nida. Mm-hmm. And therefore the halacha is, by all rights, the halacha is that you have to have uh, prisha and you can't be mityached with a woman who's forbidden to you. Mm-hmm. So how do we allow, right, what are the mechanisms halachically that we allow a man and a woman to live a married life even when they're not allowed to be with each other? So there is something called pat b'salo. Pat b'salo means he's got bread in the basket. We say that the Yetzirah works as follows. When a person has no obvious way of alleviating his needs, whenever he feels um, uh, anything, meaning it could be uh, any Yetzirah, Meaning, let's say a person feels the need, let's say Chil Shabbos, it could be the same thing, but we're going we're gonna to stick uh, to the context of sexuality. Let's say a person knows that he, since he knows that eventually there will be a time where he, he, it's guaranteed that he will be permitted to his wife, therefore he can make it through the times mm-hmm. that he's not because the Yetzirah doesn't feel the urgency. The irony is, if he would have no legal halachic recourse to fulfill it, 
he's in danger, and the Yetzirah is actually dangerous. But the Yetzirah does not control you when you know that only now it's a sur, but eventually she will be mutar to you. That's what's called pat besalo, bread in the basket. And that's, therefore, that's a basic technique against the Yetzirah anyway. Right, so this even de- has halachic delayed, implications. Delayed uh, gratification. gratification. But this is because you're guaranteed that you will have um, the ability to satisfy yourself, therefore you don't need it now, and therefore you, you will quell the Yetzirah. Right. However, if you had no recourse, actually the Yetzirah will push you to do things that are asur. Meaning a single person doesn't have a woman available, the Yetzirah will push him to do all kinds of things that he knows are wrong. Whereas if he has the availability to be able to satisfy his need in a halachic way, eventually with his wife, then it's not a problem. We're not concerned when they have yichud that he will, um, that he will uh, perform a nisur. Okay? So pat besalo means that his mind gets cooled down. Okay? Oh, that's so, what it means? It's yeah, it, meaning, pat besalo literally means bread in the basket. If he has a situation bread in the basket, it will cool down his mind. Right? So we're going to actually, there's a fascinating Gemara we're going to quote here. Gam shelo yikravela, even if he never ever comes close to her. Rak mitkarer daito, he calms down, he quiet, his mind gets uh, cooled off. Ba'alot alibo, when it raises in his heart, ki yesh muchenet lo, there is woman who is waiting, set aside, and available to him. The Efsha, and it's possible, ki ada, uh, oh, I'm sorry, did I skip? Yeah. I skip. Gam shele yikra vela, even if he doesn't come close to her, kema maksata poskim, like, uh, <laughs> like some of the poskim bring from the Gemara. The Gemara says, al Rav, Rav said, to have a kamer, he would say, man bai liyome, who wants to be married for a day? You know, the, the sages would come into town, <laughs> and the, the sages would come into town and they wanted to make sure that they behaved yeah. so they would say does anybody um, want to legally get married for the day you what know does that mean? I don't they were going to what do you mean make an official legal marriage so a woman would present herself and they'd get married for the day so that uh, he doesn't have to think about anything you know and uh, <laughs> that way he never you know like uh, he has pot de so he'll behave himself oh, when he comes see. to town so they would arrange for these marriages that women would be available without the expectation of ever, ever, ever having to do anything with that woman. It was just temporary for the day. Is that a joke or is it? No, this is a Gemara. Al Rav, Rav would say, man bai liyome, who wants to be married for the day? Shelo haya karovele, he wouldn't even come close to her. He didn't even have to rock mit karer daito. His mind would calm down. Ba'alot alibo, when it would um, uh, appear in his heart, meaning he would recognize, ki yesh if he wanted to, there would be a woman available and that's why he doesn't need it. The irony and the the um, what do they call that um, uh, reverse psychology <laughs> of the Yitzhar? But this was actually done, and I know it may be uh, shocking yeah, yeah. to people, but like there's all kinds of this kind of stuff. So hang on, they have to do, uh, do a get afterwards. Eh? Possibly, See? unless maybe maybe I don't know what it's the legal the, the the yeah it'd be tonight that yeah, yeah and, they, and they would never need to. Right. I don't. But the post can talk about this. This is a very real thing. The halacha in terms of how we function is. As uh, as married couples, well, it's a get married today. <laughs> <Every day. laughs> right, and and yeah, you know, a girl could say when she's looking to find a shidduch, hey, and you know, I was even uh, married to married. to the Amora, <laughs> but don't worry, I'm a right, I'm a bit too loud. You know, that girl, she could put on a resume. <laughs> you know, she's looking for a good a good bacher from the yeshiva, the top guy. Hey, you know, I was uh, legally married for the day <laughs> to to the Rosh Hashiva that came from. You know, <laughs> you know that would be a good. A scam, maybe, if you want to up, you know, for money, you want to up women's eligibility. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just making fun of like how strange it would be for. But like the truth is, this is, this is how back in days of yore, when men, the great sages, they would, um, they would show us the path of, of mastering the Yetzirah and being a mensch in society. Mm. Okay. Anyway, the idea is here that man, this was all, this wasn't physical as much as this was an issue of dot, meaning even without a partner and all the benefits of a human partner and a soulmate, there's the issue of Adam by himself that cannot function as himself in a proper way without having a woman set aside, meaning it's not just having a, a mate for moments of, of mating, it's this settling. You cannot function as a human being without knowing that you're part of something and that you have a partner there. That's, that's really, that's the issue. And therefore the whole thing doesn't have to be physical because it's not about the moments of joining. It's about without the moments of joining, not feeling alone and not being, not being crazy, right? And that's, and this consideration of these animals, that's what this is about. This is not meaning, he's saying you don't even have to understand this physically because the whole thing, the import 
uh, right, is even on, a, on, on the level of the dot before he was, so even he's considering, he's like, man, that's not my Rebetzin. You know, that antelope, what a fine specimen. I, you know, I can't make a, a life with that. Uh, and, and therefore, he, lo nitkara daito. And that is a matzav of lotov, just by itself. Okay, so... You also have the problem that each animal had its own mate already. So, you know, when he's con even considering it. That's, that's, a, that's a good point, right? They would, there was, it seems like there needs to be a lawyer here in Gan Eden. <laughs> This is, this is uh, what, you know, it's very troubling, what, what we're actually, like, but I, I think the point is, it's not that we're proposing that it could have worked, it's that he, he considered how there were no options for him. Right, I mean, that's the whole point. That's that, it, right. That God wanted him to yearn for something, to, to receive it after he yearned for it, you, how, otherwise right. you can't let's say, appreciate it. Exactly, meaning you don't know that the settling of you by, you can't appreciate that just the settling comes from being uh, complete with a, with a, uh, a mate. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this mirrors that which he mentioned at the end of the last piece that talked about the, uh, the, the Amora that had, that had a troubling time with his wife and he said it's enough that she takes care of these things. Mm -hmm. Because just that, he's appreciative that allows mm -hmm. him to be himself. Right. That's, that's, that's really the issue here. Right. Okay, so, so now, I think that, you, you, okay, I'm just going to finish this piece, and I, I, uh, I want to mention a point. Um, one second. So, so just the, the last part here is the Efshiki Adam Levado Maharher, and it could be that if man by himself he would have thoughts, right? He would entertain fantasies in his head. Amar Bilibo, he says in his heart, Ulai Hashem Natan Tachat Rishuti. Maybe God placed under my dominion, Balchai, some sort of living creature, maybe they would have been prepared as the bread in my basket in order to calm me down and have my mind settled. And when he approached them and he came on to them, just in terms of consideration in his mind, it just didn't settle him. It just was not Pat Besalo. Al Kain, therefore, Miyad, immediately Vayapel, Havaya Elokim Tardema Alav, God uh, brought a, a slumber uh, uh, descending upon him. Vayishan, and he slept. Vayikach Achat Mitzalotav, and he took one of his sides, etc., etc. Term Yachatab Behirah, before he sinned uh, in fantasy. Vizel Amro, and that's what the verse said. Velo Nitkara Daito, he did not um, cool, his mind did not cool down. Okay, so I, I, I want to make a point here because I, I need for myself to understand how I, I feel like we didn't necessarily drive home why this episode has to do, why it's interjected. You know, so we talked about how it's necessary. It's very nice that he has to, it's part of him coming towards having a mate and appreciating. But I, 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 just, I just want to speak out maybe a second. I was thinking that you know, originally the context is in terms of a discussion with the angels. Right. And, th and that's really what seems inappropriate here. Meaning, first of all, you were in the middle of, of, of the Ezer Konegdo story. So I think because of the Ezer Konegdo, meaning the animals, their names, to, say, to give them names really means both things. Meaning the idea of coming up with grasping their essence mm -hmm. means being <clears throat> able to consider them on the level of man's own humanity, meaning he understood them so well that he understood them perfectly. He understood his place and he understood their place. He was able to give them a name and touch up their essence, and in so doing, realize where he is vis-a-vis -vis them and them vis-a-vis -vis us. So the meaning, the, right? So that meaning, it was it's appropriate to actually both these things come together here because this is the moment where he's being prepped to find who he is in the world mm -hmm. so that he can have a mate, mm -hmm. and in so doing, that act is the perfect demonstration to the angels of his importance and who he is. So God kind of brings these two together, meaning in him finding a mate, this is the moment where God can demonstrate to the angels that he has a perfect grasp of his station in existence because he has a mastery, because he includes, incorporates all those elements, and he's able to name the various details and aspects of existence in a way that the angels can't. In so doing, he's becoming himself and now priming himself to receive a mate and to become who he is. And it's a, actually a beautiful kind of a co coalescence of these two issues, and it's not really a digression or a insertion, but rather it's a beautiful. It's part of this story of Adam coming into being. It's fascinating because what we always forget 
is that he never had a childhood. You know, he comes into this world as an adult, and this is the moment that he discovers himself. So there's a beautiful pasuk that will and coming up that says, "Al ken, therefore yazov." Uh, yes. That a person should leave at avivet imo, right? Vidavak bi ishto, and that describes a very, very basic kind of story of an organism um, becoming itself. Because you come from a source, and then you have to distinguish yourself. You have to individuate, mm. as they say, mm. or that as the biologists say, in order to reach um, some sort of maturity, so that you can mating really finding a mate means consolidating your existence, becoming one, and then you're returning back. I mean, you're carrying on where you can, so meaning there's like this uh, what we would call klal uprat uklal. There's a wholeness where it's made up of elements that are not individuated. It's all this amorphous oneness, and then the individual pieces they kind of like have become identity, they become as pieces, and then they coalesce back together as a oneness that's made up of pieces, right? So what I mean to say is that every adolescent puts their parent through hell because they need to find themselves. Mm -hmm. And hopefully if they settle and they really find themselves, then they're good with their parents. Mm -hmm. But there needs to be a break, kind of. Only, right, the, the, t in order to become yourself, only you can choose your mate, right? The parents that choose your mate for you, that's not you, right? So the, <laughs> the Pasuk is, is describing this idea that you have to become yourself. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately you graduate in order that's to right. become ultimately part of something bigger than you. And that's the childhood that you're talking about. You have to know yourself, really, really yeah. to be, and that's what, that's exactly what we're describing here. Yeah, but I also want to bring out this idea that, um, which we'll read later on, that, you know, when um, Chava ate from the tree, she only discovered she was naked when she gave it to Adam. And no, that is no, 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 no. No, they both realized immediately after that they were naked. It's meaning the upshot of, of I mean, if in real time, maybe you could say, but really it says, it says first, the Pasuk makes a point of saying that they were Arum and Veloyed by Shashu, yeah. and then after it's finally, when it, after they both ate, it yeah. says that they, that they realized that they were naked. Yeah, yeah, but the question is, why didn't she realize it when she ate, before she gave it to him? So that's why I was, the way you said it, it, it sounded like she realized beforehand. No, no, she didn't. I'm oh, okay, okay, okay. That she okay. didn't, until right. she gave it to Abs him. Right, that Because sounds... you can only relate, you can only discover yourself through the eyes of the others. It's the mirror. It's the mirror, right, and, right. and he didn't have a mirror. The only mirror he had was the animals. So this is the... Also specifically nakedness, it specifically refers to the aspects of themselves that are used for connection, right? Mm -hmm. Which means it's totally irrelevant out of the context of another. It's only when he saw Chava, and Chava saw him, and the, the aspects that they have in order to unite, when they saw that that had been corrupted, then they realized they needed to cover. Because that's irrelevant outside of the other. If you're right. just, you don't really, exactly right. like you're saying, yeah. Right. It's right. a very good point. Right. Okay, so, um, yeah, so that's that piece. Um, Fascinating. Okay. So what's the, what's the time? It's 10.38. The, uh, the next piece here is about the creation of Chava, and it's involved. Okay, so you I want to leave it for next week? Yeah. Or you want to start it, or you want to do it? I, I, it's, it's up to you, but I mean, we're not going to get very far. I think we should start it. Then. Okay. Okay, do you have a I'm sorry. Yeah, I do. Let's, let's do another thing.